this. Uh, yeah, I'll try doing it by myself. I got one half. One half. All right. So we've got we've got nine minus a minus seven over okay. six minus a minus two. So the, the, the thing here to keep in mind is that the subtraction operator mm -hmm. is always there. And then if the number is negative, you put it in parentheses. We're doing that with quadratic formula quite a bit. So it looks like I'm going to have a slightly different result than you. 16 divided by eight or two or two. And again, because all the slopes are different in the multiple choice here, we know that letter A is the, the best choice for that. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, take a look at question three. All right, write an equation of the line through negative one comma negative two with a slope of two. So this slope of two is key because A and B have slopes of two. Y equals MX plus B. These both have a slope of two. Question is, well, which one satisfies this ordered pair? Okay, so there's two ways to do this. One is to actually write the equation. The other is to test the points in the two answers. So if this were like an SAT or ACT, we would do that, but probably you got to show some work here. So to do that, we probably should just substitute the values in for, for X and Y. Okay, so what I mean by that is Y is negative two, X is negative one and we're going to solve for B. Have you seen this before? Is this something that's clear? I have, but like I'm not the best at them. Okay. Well, uh, we're gonna work through it together here. So on the left, it's negative two that with the Y value. Two times negative one is negative two. So just bringing that stuff down. We wanna solve for B. We wanna get B by itself. How do we undo this number here? You add it. Add, add two to both sides. And so we get zero equals B or preferably B equals zero. That goes back into the equation right there. Mm -hmm. So which would be the correct choice, A or B, when you put zero in for B in this equation? Uh, a. Is A. Good. I like these. These go fast. I was I was hesitant to say yeah we're gonna get through uh, <laughs> a bunch of questions because I never know here until you don't jinx it that's one thing yeah uh, that's about I think that just happened <laughs> so here oh. we go question uh, question four are the lines defined by these equations parallel perpendicular or neither so one way to do this is to graph them. And, and keep in mind, this is all stuff that we've been working on before I, I started helping you. So I, you're going to have to give me a little guidance here. Graphing it will tell us the answer right away. The other option is to solve for the slope in both equations, mm -hmm. basically to solve for y. So what, what would you like us to do? What do you think makes the most sense here? I would rather just solve for y. Got it. So when I say solve for y, we're, we're actually solving for this form, y equals mx plus b. So we'll do that one equation at a time. We'll start with the first equation here. First, we're going to subtract x from both sides. Okay. Now, this is a little bit awkward, but you're going to actually put that x in front of the number. So this becomes 3y equals negative x plus 8. I know that maybe it's, it looks better to put it over here to the right of 8 but you really want the variable to come first. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. Now there's a three in front of the Y, it's multiplying, so we're gonna divide by three. Now you're dividing everything by three. It's not a choice, everything gets divided by three. Okay, so this becomes Y equals, there's really a negative one in front of the X. Mm -hmm. So the the what you're dividing by three is really the negative one, so it's negative one third X, plus eight over three. And you, do, and you do leave it in this fractional form. What is the slope 
of this equation. Um, what is the number in front of x? Uh, it's negative one. Uh, there's a little bit more. There's a whole the whole fraction, everything that's in front of x. Oh, sorry, negative one over three. Yes, perfect. Okay, so we've got that. Now we've got to do the same thing for the other equation. It's a little bit easier. Negative three x plus y equals nine. So again, our goal is to get y by itself, okay? In the previous problem, we subtracted x from both sides. We want to get rid of this minus 3x. How can we do that? Um, minus that minus you subtract. So you subtract when it's positive. See how the, see how the x over here is positive? And you subtract. You here add. it's, you're at, yeah, because it's already negative. Good. I couldn't see the negative and then I... Is my writing large enough or is, is, is there, are you, is it, because sometimes I know that it might writing get a little tiny. Do you need me to make any modifications to the lesson here? Oh, no, it's good. Okay. So just like in the previous problem, it's really better to squeeze that number right up in front of the number. So it's 3x plus 9 like that. Mm -hmm. And now, and now it's in slope intercept form. What is the slope? Okay. What's the... What's the number in front of x? It's three. It's three, very good. Okay, now what do you remember about parallel lines in terms of their slope? Oh, dude, I, I completely forgot, but I feel like they don't touch, that's one thing. That's true. And the reason they don't touch is because they have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. Mm -hmm. Now perpendicular, two ways to remember perpendicular um, have you heard opposite reciprocal? Yeah, I have. Okay, so the, the if you look at the two slopes here, negative one third, if you flip it, three over one, negative one, and then you negate it, that's the opposite part, it becomes positive three, which is the, the other slope here. Uh -huh. okay. So the, 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 the short of it is that they're perpendicular. The long, you know, information here is that you can also take the product of the slopes. And when I say product, I mean multiply them. If the product of the slopes is one, I'm sorry, is negative one, then they are perpendicular. So two, two ways, opposite reciprocal or take the product. All right, so like I said, as soon as, uh, <laughs> As soon as I suggest these are going fast, we get the get the slow ones here. All right. Ready to move on to number five? Yes. Yeah. All right. So just a brief review for number five here. I believe those are there. Um, I, this thing I. I is the answer to what is the square root of negative one? Because the square root of negative one is unknown. There's no two numbers that multiply together to get negative one. So they use this letter I in math, okay? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna have to do some pieces here. Um, let's look at the square root of negative 81, okay? The square root of negative one is really the square root of negative one times 81. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah. And there's a property of square roots that allows you to break them apart. Okay, the square root of negative one is I. What is the square root of 81? Uh, the square root of 81 is nine. It's nine. Now, just as a preference, the number comes before the, uh, the, the constant, I. the I. Okay, <clears throat> can you do the same thing here for negative 100? Can you tell me what it becomes? Yeah, it becomes 10, so it would be- Just, just 10? Wait, no, negative. Wait. It's just like the one on the left, but a different number, meaning you should do the same steps on the left as. Oh, yeah. It would. So it would first be the square root of negative one times negative 10. Times 100. Times 100. I'm sorry. I'm looking. I'm That's looking okay. At that one. Then, like you said, we can split them up. So it'd be negative one times negative 100. 
Yeah, be, be careful there. The, the, what you said is slightly different than what I wrote. The square root of negative one, square root of 100. Only the, the one is negative. The 100 is still positive. Okay. okay. And the um, i times 10. Good. Which equals 10i. Very good. Okay. So what's important here to see is that the square root of negative 81 is 9i and the square root of negative 100 is 10i. So we kind of have to, we had to come off to the side to work that out. So uh, just with, with the limited room we've got here, the square root of, of negative 81 is 9i minus two times 10i. Is that substitution agreeable to you? Yeah. I'm taking, okay. So this is two times 9i, that's 18i minus 20i, that becomes minus 2i. Mm -hmm. A lot of A's so far. Uh, I guess A's is for lucky. Uh, yeah, we'll see. It's a lucky number, but it's not even a number. Lucky variable. There you go. All right, so it looks like we get a, we get a couple of, of questions here um, in, in, in the complex domain. Uh, if you ever need to write something down, just let me know. I can, we can go back and look at it again. All right, square root of negative 200. And 43. So just like the previous problem, it's negative one times 243. Got it. So this becomes the square root of negative one times the square root of 243. Now, some students know right away what this is because they know their exponents. They know that three squared is nine and three cubed is 27 and so on. And there's a bunch of these to know. But if you're not that type of student, we have to break this apart. And that's okay. Yeah, and that's okay. I, I wasn't either. I had, it took me a while to realize, oh, there's actually patterns here. So we're gonna do what's called a prime factorization. Okay, so let's start. Does two, does the number two divide evenly into 243? Well, number two, yeah, I would think so. Do you have a calculator available? I will use that, hold on. No, it doesn't. It does not. See, this is an odd number, so it's never going to be divisible by two. So the next prime number you try is three. Is 243 divisible by three? Yeah, it's 81. It's 81. And then if it worked, you try it again. Does three go into 81? Yes. 27. Good. Keep going. Yeah, it goes to 27. And then, and then it becomes nine. Yeah which becomes three and three. So you you stop when you have prime numbers in all the leaves. Yeah. So that's like, that's the power of four. The five, one, two, three, four, five. So you're looking for, you're looking for pairs. And for each pair, you can be a, bring a three out. Mm -hmm. Look, there's another pair, you can bring a three out, but this lone three stays in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just working on this part here. You're bringing a three out. You're bringing another three out, three stays inside. Is that, is that clear? Yeah. Okay, so this becomes nine squared of three. So, you know, kind of we got a lot going on, of course, kind of like breaking apart two problems, but this part right here is this right here. What is the square root of i? What does that become? Um, or sorry, square root of negative one. I gave it away. It's just i, it's just i. So this, this is the key for you to remember here. The square root of negative one is i. This is something you're gonna have to remember for not just this course, but for future courses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we just pair up the answers here. It's, it's, not, it's i nine square root of three. But like I mentioned, typically you put the, the coefficient first. Right. There's your answer, nine i square root of three. Oops, that's not right. Let's see. Do all that work to get the right answer and then you mark the wrong one. <laughs> that, that, that's the definition of frustrating. I also marked the wrong one too. Yes. <laughs> and that, that is something that happens on standardized tests. They, they are very deceptive. Um, so, all right, we got uh, number seven here. Number seven. All right. So here's what I'm seeing. Uh, we need to write this out just a tiny bit different because it's not very clear the way it's written. Mm -hmm. 
there it is. So it's 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 the whole thing, 2i minus 5, not plus 5, minus 5. That would impact the answer. 2i minus 5 over i plus, wow, I did that again. i plus 1. Ooh, got to get some coffee going a little earlier. 2i minus 5 over i plus 1. OK. In your studies, have you heard the word conjugate? Okay, so in the math world, and I'm going to show you what the conjugate is. The conjugate is the same thing that you have written, except you change the operator. Plus goes to minus, or if you had a minus, it goes to a plus. That's the only change. So you, you have this thing on the right that you multiply by. The only difference is that if, if you have a plus in the middle, it becomes a minus. If you have a minus in the middle, it becomes a plus. Now, to be fair, you have to multiply both the top and the bottom by the conjugate. Okay, so now it's really two separate problems. Okay, so we've really got to do the top foiling and the bottom foiling. Okay, but I, I want us to just focus on the, the bottom foiling first. Do you remember foil? Yeah. Okay. I times I, what does that become? Like I squared. Good. And then I times negative one. Negative I. Good. And then keep going. One times I. Uh, just I. Plus, Good. Plus. And then one times negative one. Negative one. Perfect. All right. So now do you see any cancellations here? Uh, you can cancel out the negative I and the negative one because they're the same thing. Negative i and plus i, yes, those go away. Yes. Now we've we we said in the last problem the square root of negative one is i. Okay. That's like great. It's like all right, I got that. But what about i squared? Well, if can you envision squaring both sides of this equation? No. <laughs> that's that's fair. Like, why would you ever do that? Is a good question. Um, but what does the square do with the square root? What would it how does it affect, affect the square root? Well, it removes it. That's right. So not only do you remember need to remember the square root of negative 1 equals i, you have to remember that i squared equals negative 1. So this, this i squared right here is really negative 1. Yeah. So i squared becomes negative 1. You bring down the other negative 1. That becomes negative 2. So that was just that was just the bottom though. There's more. Okay. We have to do the top. Okay. <laughs> I am very sarcastic. I love the excitement this morning. <laughs> right, here we go. So you're gonna, I try to keep it light. I mean, it's uh, you know, math at 10 a.m. isn't the most exciting thing, uh, but you're doing great. Two i times i, what does that become? Two i times i. 2i times i, 2i, right? 2i squared. So the i's times the i gives you the i squared. Two times, there's really a one in front of the i. That becomes the, the two. So that's, that's the f. We're doing FOIL again. So now it's 2i times negative 1. What does that become? Which times what? You're doing the O, the outside, so, or the outies. I remember you saying that. 2i times negative 1. Uh, negative 2i. Good. And then the innies minus 5 times i. Negative 5i. OK. And then negative 5 times negative 1. Positive 5. Good. OK. So the, the numerator here, and we got to kind of rewrite because there's just a lot going on. The numerator, the two inner inner terms combine. So you have 2i squared minus 7i plus 5. The denominator is still negative 2. <clears throat> There's still more to do. i squared, i squared is negative 1. So this, this thing right here, this i squared becomes negative 1. And because you're, they're squeezed together, you will be multiplying them. <clears throat> So this becomes 2 times negative 1 becomes negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 becomes, becomes 3. OK, so you're, 
you're currently looking at three minus seven i over negative two. We're almost done. I know this probably feels like it's never ending here. You're yeah. almost done. So the next thing here is you divide each of them by negative two. Okay, and this, this is the final step. So just a little bit of cleanup with signs. The negative has to go in the numerator. That's just a preference. So this becomes negative three halves. The two negatives on the right cancel to make a positive. And then you write seven over two times i. Now, because we've gone so far down in the problem here, let me snip in the answers again so you can see them to compare. If I have to scroll, it's a lot of work here to do. Uh, so what do you say here? Which is the correct answer? B. I heard B, I think. Yeah, that's what I said. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, was, I was like, no, that, that's correct. I can tell. Yes, yes. So eight, eight is just like seven. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to do it on your own, but I'm going to ask you to be a little bit more involved in this one. Got it. Okay. You you will you will need to multiply by what's called the conjugate. The conjugate is just the change in sign mm -hmm. operator in the middle. And you do the same thing for the top and the bottom. So the conjugate is one minus two i because this is one plus two i. It's just the change from plus to minus or minus to plus. Okay, so it says I have you a little bit more involved. I'd like you to foil the bottom. Okay. And so one times one is one, obviously. One times negative two i is going to be negative two i. And then 2i times 1 plus 2i, and then 2i times negative 2i is negative 4i. Squared. Squared. Yes. I hope I think I was missing something. I would just have to say squared. Okay. Okay, really good. Can you uh, try simplifying a little bit further? Yeah. I, I can simplify the... Okay, I'm gonna first put it in order. Okay. Four i squared minus two i plus i. I just heard something that the negative goes with the four i squared. Plus one. So I can I cancel like can I remove the two i the two? Yes. Okay. They go away. Okay. So now we have negative four i squared plus one. Okay, and what is what is i squared equal to? One squared, negative one squared. i squared is equal to negative one. Yeah. So what that what that does for you here is it it gives you a value to put in for that negative negative four times negative one mm -hmm. plus one. So that would be positive four plus one, which is five. Yes. <clears throat> so we know the denominator is five, which is which is handy, um, except most of the answers have five in the bottom. So we can't like glean anything from that, but that's OK. Will you uh, foil the top for us, please? Yeah. Six i and i negative yes. Is it two i squared again? Uh, yes, positive two i squared this time. Six now I'm going to two i squared minus six i plus i minus three. I don't think I can remove the the two i since they don't have the same number. You, you you cannot. This time it's it's all kind of together. Three minus seven i plus two i squared, or if you've got it, two i squared 
minus 7i plus 3, but you can use the fact that i squared equals negative 1 to help you reduce. All right. Well, it would be 2, well, negative 2, actually. Yep. It, Good. Negative 2 times i. When when you when you put the i squared equals negative one in for the i squared here, the i goes away. So it's just it's just two times negative one. Two times negative one. Um, so it's negative two, and that combines with the other number here. Okay, so that would be like negative six. You're you're adding. Uh, five. But it's negative. Like you're adding a negative number. This is negative two. Negative. So so sometimes you got to write it out fully to get it. It's 10 a.m. I'm not surprised my brain. Is yes, off. yes. All right. So the three minus two is one, one minus seven I over five. Yeah. And then now you divide each of them by five. Ah, lovely. And you, you do see your answer there. That's C. You're dividing both by by five. It's not a choice. You have to divide both. Oh, okay. So it is not C. Uh, try again. That means it's either no. So it's negative. So there's subtraction. It's A. It is A. Yeah. The answers are not formatted well, but um, you have to know that that slash means the vertical way of writing it. This is called in line. In line, but it's. Not real. It's it's not very helpful for you. You'd you'd like to see it a little bit more, more clear. Okay. Um, moving on to number nine. And you do have to show work on these. Is that right? Uh, only if you get revisions. Like, I, I'm still writing it down. Oh. I write it down just in case because sometimes I do get revisions and. When it comes to multiple choice, this is what the teacher does. He makes you write the problems you got wrong. But since I am working with you, I, since I'll have everything written down, so if I do get to know, I can just take a photo and show it to him. Right. Yeah. yeah the, the reason I'm asking about 10 is, is completing the square is a tough one on this one. It's not. He wants us to show our work anyway. OK. All right. Uh, did you get all this down? Sorry, I keep scrolling. Yeah, I did. Okay, so completing the square, one of the most frustrating things for students in math, um, it's, it's tough, it's not great. Uh, the first thing to do here is to subtract this five to the other side of the equation. So I'm gonna write it out over here off to the side, 10x squared plus two x, I'm gonna leave a space equals negative five. I'm then going to put a little box here and a box here. And we're going to fill in the box with a number coming up here. Why not right. something? Say that again. I'm not being slow for you today. I I, I, really, I apologize. I just didn't hear you. Uh, no, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> one more. Um, so uh, is it okay if I proceed from here? Yeah. All right. So the next step, and this one's this one's a little bit awkward, but you factor out an x squared from each of these. You might wonder why. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we kind of have to get to the end to to know why we're doing this. But so just just go with it for a moment here. But notice that if you take ten and you multiply it into x squared, that becomes ten x squared. If you take ten and multiply it into two x or two over ten x, you get back to two x. So these lines are equivalent for the moment. Mm -hmm. Now, the next step here, and this is this is a, it's a little bit weird, but you have to take half, half of this. So sometimes students got to come off to the side. You're like, what is half of a fraction? Well, in this case, it's two over twenty, or one over ten. Okay. The reason you're doing that is because we're going to further reduce this to x plus one over ten squared. So the the 1 over 10 comes from taking half of this number. Again, you might wonder, why are we doing this? It, it kind of like the ends justifies the steps here. 
we then square, square the one over 10. So squaring one over 10 means one over 10 times one over 10, which is one over 100. Lovely. Yes, more fractions. I don't want more fractions. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, that's talk to your teacher. Um, again, if you take this 10 and you multiply it in, you get back to the previous line. So the, the number that goes in the red box, which is what we've been searching for, is 10 times 1 over 100, which is 10 over 100, or 1 tenth. So what goes in the red box there is plus 1 over 10, plus 1 over 10. And you're like, why, why, why are we even doing all this? It, it, the, the goal, the goal, and this 10 comes down, the goal is to get it so that you can use the square root property. You can take a square root of both sides here to solve this. Now, on the right, we have to simplify this. And remember, negative five is really negative five over one. So if we make a common denominator of 10, it's really negative 50 over 10 plus one over 10, which is negative 49 over 10 like that. And this, this looks bad, but we're, we've made a ton of progress. We've gone some, from something that's very difficult to something that we can now uh, relatively easily uh, solve for x. So let me know when you get caught up to this, this point here. Yeah, I'm caught up. OK, so we're going we're gonna, to we, we want to get rid of this 10 in front. Typically, you would divide by 10. But because there's a fraction over here, I'm going to show this as multiplying by 1 over 10 and one over 10 here. So on the left, on the left, it becomes just x plus one over 10. On the right, it's negative 49 over 100. And, and as bad as this looks, we can now take a square root of both sides. Mm -hmm. When you take a square root of both sides, it's you have to put a plus or a minus in front. On the left, it undoes the square. On the right, you have to take the square root of the top number and the square root of the bottom number. But thankfully, these are both nice. Nice. <laughs> the square root of 100 is 10. Yep. The square root of 49 is 7, but that negative, if you recall from earlier questions, then whenever there's a negative in there, that means there's an i. Right. OK, so here's what we're left with x plus 1 over 10 equals plus or minus 7i over 10. We're almost there. You have, oh. to get, you have to get rid of this 1 over 10. Yeah. Subtract 1 over 10 from both sides. And just like we were doing earlier with the, the equations, you want to put that in front. Right. We can talk about why, or we can say, you know what, I'm just going to go with what Matthew says. And this is our answer. Now. We're done, but we gotta we gotta like line up our answer with their answers, which uh, you know, kind of frustrating. So you can see it's it's either uh, a, or I'm sorry, it's either a B or C. Wait, don't you mean B or D? Sorry, B or D. Yeah, yeah. That that's why we don't do this in a vacuum because. I make mistakes just like everyone else. So, yes. Uh, so what I'm noticing, the difference between B and D is in the bottom with the 10. Yeah. One's negative, one's positive. You've got a positive 10 there. Yeah. I'm Looks like it's letter D. Say D as well, because it's like, well, it's already there. So, well, you're positive 10 as it is. So, let me finish this back. Ugh. All right, uh, number 11. OK. Number, number like, 10. We're going to do 10 next. <laughs> it's OK. I think, you, I think you, yeah, you're right. Maybe we all need a cup of coffee. Yeah. I'll get water because I don't like caffeine. Yeah. Uh, so number 10, I guess it's another completing the square problem. So the first thing is I'm going to move this x squared back to the left. So the way this looks now is it's x squared minus 2x plus 5 equals 0. And kind of like the last problem, we want to move that constant to the other, other side of the equation. 
Now notice I'm leaving that space again. We're going to fill in the box. Okay. This one is significantly easier. This would have been the one to do first if we were learning it. However, you know, we, we're past that. So if you recall from the previous problem, you take half of this number, half of negative two. What is half of negative two? What is half? Wait, did you say what is half of negative two? Yes, what is half of negative two? Uh, negative one. <laughs> yes. The reason I ask is the sign is really important. The sign comes from this. If, if this number is negative, this thing in here is negative. Mm -hmm. So the number that goes back here is the square of negative one. You're squaring a negative. What does that become? I'm sorry, can you repeat that like one more time? <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. I'm asking what the square of negative one becomes. When you square this one, what goes in the box here? A positive one. Positive one. And that goes to both sides here. Whatever yeah. goes in the box goes to both sides. All right, now on the right side, negative five plus one is negative four. And what's what, what, what you, you should see, or like the whole point of this completing the square is that now you can take the square root of both sides. You only have an X under the square. So by undoing the square root, using square root to undo it, you get it down to just X minus one plus or minus the square root of negative four. I'll let you get caught up to this point. Okay. What is the square root of negative four? Uh, negative two. Nope. Two actually, but. Two, what about the negative? What does that become? I. Two I, yes. If you take anything away from our lesson, I hope it's that today. I hate I. Why, why would you? <laughs> so what's interesting is in other, in other uh, parts of the world, they actually use J. Really? For this? Yeah, that that further confuses. You'll see that it just uh, maybe. Also, mathematicians had to be like, you know what? Here, let's uh, just tell kids here's an I and a J. Now use it. <laughs> it gets even more complicated. So they sometimes use J oh. to describe coordinates in um, three dimensions. So there's other issues here. Oh my god. <laughs> We're almost there. Add one to both sides. That goes in front. X equals one plus or minus. 2i. Lovely. Okay. Then the answer is B. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's keep uh, keep going here. Uh -huh. I am now half awake, and I used to be fully awake. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Math does that to me. I'm like fully energized and all of a sudden at the end of math, I'm like, I want to take a nap. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, it's not energizing <laughs> for sure, at least from the student's perspective. All right, what is the value of the discriminant for the following quadratic equation? So if you recall from the quadratic formula, the discriminant is the part under the square root. So sometimes they use big D, which means B <laughs> squared minus four AC for the discriminant. Right. Okay, now in your problem, you have to identify the value of A, B, and C. So they're the coefficients. A is six, B is one, because there's really a one in front of the X. It's, it has nothing to do with the variables, it's just the number in front. C is minus 15. Any questions on that? I have none. Okay, so, so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to put the values in the discriminant. It's best to substitute them in parentheses and go to your favorite calculator and get this result for us, please. I'm going to Desmos because I don't trust my Apple calculator. For you're, this. You're, you're a convert now to, to Desmos. You converted me to Desmos. How do you <laughs> feel good about it? I feel like you do. <laughs> Good job, me. I, again, I have no affiliation with them, so, but uh, thank you for uh, considering it. Yeah, man. Good By Desmos. <laughs> Maybe they should consider it. You should write them a whole email on why. <laughs> I think they're doing okay with the funding they've got. Yeah, because I remember my teacher was, was like, here, use Desmos to graph 
And I'm like, is he sponsored by Desmos? <laughs> like, no, that's not true. Like, it, uh, the amount of times that teachers have recommended me Desmos, I'm kind of leaving it. But they are sponsored. But uh, it's whatever. I got the answer. It's negative 359. Okay, but that's not there. So that means that means either you've made a mistake or the answers are wrong. And I'm going to suggest that the answers are probably not wrong. So be very careful about your signs, right? One squared in parentheses minus four yeah. times six times negative 15. Just double check that you've got it entered correctly. I got, I, I fixed it. It was my 15 because I was blind and half asleep. <laughs> uh, the answer is positive 361. Good. Yeah. Well done. All right, let's take a look at 12. So 12 is identical uh, in terms of like it's asked for the exact same thing. I'll, uh, I'll set it up for you here by giving you the discriminant. Will you calculate that value for us, please? Okay, uh, I now have to say the A, B, and C is right because I'm pretty sure. Yes. Okay, A is three. Good. Do I put in the square root as well or no? You do not need the square root. The square root is the discriminant is under the square root, but it has nothing to do with the square root. C is two and C is four. Okay. Nice. Use those values, and the answer is there. Yippee, okay. <laughs> okay, so two squared minus four times three. Uh, okay. I'm using Desmos again. <laughs> yes. You have converted me. <laughs> Good job. All right. B, wait, hold on. Two squared. Okay. Minus. Four in parentheses three minus three parentheses four. That answer I got negative forty-four. You are correct. And I, I like that you're you're putting it in parentheses. Even if they're positive, still do this. It's a good habit to get into for being successful in this class and and others. Okay, so question 13, I believe 14 as well. You're using the Actually, uh, I know you. I know you want to do these in order, um, probably. But we're going to do fifteen next because it follows from what we just did, and then we'll come back and do thirteen. All right. It's it's a quick it's a quick thing here. All right. <clears throat> so the discriminant of a quadratic is equal to the value of negative two. There are three possibilities. When the discriminant is greater than zero, there are two real solutions. That's obviously not the case here. When it equals zero, there is one real solution. When the discriminant is less than zero, there are two complex solutions. What is the correct answer based on that? Oh, just uh, like one real solution, maybe? What's the value of the discriminant? Negative two. Is that greater than zero? No. Oh, there's two complex solutions. Yes. Yes. The answer is two complex solutions. Yes. Yeah. Very fascinating. That, right. was, that was the quickest answer. That's why I want to make sure we got that here. Yeah, uh, not, we're doing the quickest answer first because why not? Right. Uh, it, and, that, and that's the, you know, it, if we did them in the order of fastest, we would get more done, but we got to get through all of them. So we'll, we'll do our best here. We're, we're going to, this will probably be our last question for today, but um, we, we got a lot done. So use the quadratic formula to solve each equation. A equals two, B equals minus five, and C equals four. So we have X equals opposite of B plus or minus the square root B squared minus four AC all over 2a, parentheses negative five, negative parentheses negative five, plus or minus the square root, parentheses negative five squared, 
minus four times two times four all over two times two. So the part under the square root, the discriminant is the most important thing to get right. Yeah, if I put you, it in the calculator. Yeah, I'm gonna do it as well, just because we are running short on time. I'll, I'll uh, get this for you here. So this ends up being negative seven. So it's five plus or minus the square root of negative seven. Let me just double check that. Yeah, that's correct. All over four. So from earlier today, the negative inside here becomes an I. So this becomes five plus or minus I square root seven over four. And actually the way they presented the answer, you should be able to identify it from here. Five plus or minus I square root of seven over four looks like, looks like letter A is, uh, is correct on that one. Okay. Yes. All right. So if if you had time today, I would recommend trying 14 here. Let me see if I can set it up for you. Um, it is quadratic formula. It's it's a equals 12, b equals minus 5, c equals minus 7. So it's minus minus 5 plus or minus the square root minus 5 squared minus 4 times 12 times negative seven all over two times 12. So you, it looks like it, it looks like this works out nicely just based on the answer. So I would recommend trying that in the Desmos calculator, uh, 15, 16, 17. Some of them you might be able to do um, to kind of up to you, but we do have to stop here for today. I've got another uh, lesson right after you. So I will not be able to extend the time here, but uh, I hope that helped.